lot of these same principles that we talk about basketball-wise, they transfer very, very easily over to life. And that's the, mo the most interesting part. If you learn these lessons in basketball, you have a better life because of it if you do things the right way. So that's kind of what my my interest in, in, in doing this. And I'll give you the history of how we're standing here or how we're sitting here today talking about um, getting better basketball. Give you 20 seconds about me. Uh, I uh, played, played uh, football in college, basketball and football in high school. Loved athletics. I feel like athletics taught me a lot of things that helped me in life today that I can never repay the people that helped me. So I, I obviously like to do the same in return for other athletes. And I want to see people be better. Uh, after my first year of college, I was at Laney College. I was going into my second year and I got diabetes and uh, got, got very sick, lost uh, almost 30 pounds. And the doctor said, hey, you're not gonna play your sophomore year. So I took a year off. And what I realized was some of the stuff that I was doing training performance wise helped me with my health. And, and I also, in retrospect, learned that some of the things that I was doing health wise was not helping me with my performance. So I feel like some of my decisions made me sick. And so my one of, one of my whys for doing this is I don't want any of you guys to make, and, and ladies, to make the same mistakes that I made. Hopefully you guys can do a better job, make better decisions than I did, so that you can learn from some of the mistakes and we can prevent that cycle of making the same mistake over and over again. Uh, after, uh, after Laney, I wound up going to Davis and I wound up going to law school. So I became a lawyer, I practiced law for 12 years. My passion has always been strength and conditioning, health and performance. I've always been interested in how to make humans better through different hacks. So after practicing law for over a decade, um, I was lucky enough that my wife was willing to hire me at her gym, and now I get to work for, for a reasonably good boss. <laughs> uh, we got a couple of our coaches, Deanna's here, uh, and Talia's interning with, uh, with us as well. She's a uh, strength coach at SI. And again, you know, for, for you guys, if I can, impart a little bit of a little bit of knowledge a little bit of, of saving you spinning your wheels that that would make uh, you know that would make my make my night uh, so let's get uh, started with uh, with with the presentation piece of it a couple of disclaimers okay before uh, I tell you anything you know you better than I know you so if let's say I say drink more water and you know that that's not a good idea for you because somebody told you otherwise, then please don't do that because you ultimately are the boss of you and you're, you're gonna control yourself and you're gonna make the decisions for yourself. Um, and then anything that I tell you today, I reserve the right to change my mind tomorrow. I'm not married to anything. I'm just married to the better way. So if you got the better way, I'm doing it your way. I don't, I, my way, throw in the garbage can. And um, pretty informal. If there's something that you guys want to ask but don't want to ask in a group, obviously you can ask me. Uh, Robbie is also one of our coaches. Sorry to introduce her. That's uh, my wife, Robbie. And uh, she also does all the nutrition stuff here. She's a wealth of knowledge in, in that department. We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight as well. And she can kind of dig deeper in if you guys have any like more detailed questions that I can't answer. Uh, if you don't want to ask questions informally, you can interrupt me at any time. I will answer any question. If I don't know the answer to the question, I will tell you, hey, I don't know the answer. I'll go figure out what the best way to do it is, and I'll come back to you, and I'll ask the right people and dig under the right, uh, under the right uh, uh, stones to make sure that you guys get the, get the right answers. We also are lucky enough to have uh, Dr. Chris Thompson, who's a kinesiology professor up at USF. Uh, Chris is also a wealth of knowledge in the uh, performance uh, arena as well. So we've got some great folks in the house. Um, if you want to put questions up onto the parking lot that you don't want to ask, just write a topic and I'm happy to speak on it or just come see one of us uh, you know, informally afterwards and we'll answer any questions. So 
Let's get let's get going. Okay. This is just in. Basketball, really hard on your body. You need to train really smart and then hard to stand up to it. This is uh, Tim DeFrancesco, who's the former LA Lakers performance coach, very, very knowledgeable coach. You guys know this, but I see it because when guys come see me, I see how hard it is on their bodies, because I see other bodies. I see people that come in in their 50s that have better bodies and move better, that have better functioning joints than some of the basketball players that I see at 18, 20, 20, 25. And so what we're not doing is we're not doing a good enough job at, at, at saving our bodies so our bodies can last longer and actually perform better, okay? Let's talk a little bit about the nervous system. We're gonna keep things super simple today. Here's what happens, you got this nervous system. You can run high on the red, okay? You can run low. If you run too low, you're probably not playing basketball because basketball is a stressful event all the time. If you're running too high and you run the car too fast, something usually breaks. This nervous system is connected to something else and that's your chemistry. The better you manage the nervous system, the better the chemistry will be. And what I mean by that is anybody know Barry Bonds? He used to go down to see a guy by the name of Victor Conti because he wanted more chemistry because he wanted to have better performance. Now, I'm not suggesting that you guys should go see Vic Victor Conti, but I think that it, you have to understand the decisions that you make on this, on this nervous system part impact the chemistry over here and how your performance will be. I don't want to dig deep, any deeper into this. It's a very complicated subject. This is as, as simple as I can make it, but you guys have to understand and own this part of it. How to be better. Your number one ability as an athlete is your availability. If you're not available, I don't care about your crossover dribble, your 28 point, uh, 28 foot three point shot, your uh, alley-oop dunk, it doesn't matter because when uh, Coach Carl was telling me, oh, the Pro-Am team's gonna win next year and Tutu's sitting on the bench, don't matter because he's not available. So I don't care how good he is. Once you're available, then I care about your ability. And we're gonna talk about performance training, but <laughs> performance without availability is worthless. Couple, couple of uh, common traits of success. What I did in trying to help you guys is talk to my friends who train pros. Guys at the Wizards, guys at the Warriors, guy, former Philadelphia 76ers strength coach, guy at, the, at AS Roma who, who trained uh, soccer players at German national team. And I, I'm asking these guys, hey, what, what do you see that are the, the guys that are elite? What are they doing? Well, here's what they're doing. They understand that quality is way, way more important than, qua than, than, um, than quantity. And what I mean by this, when we talked about the nervous system, we're talking about how, hey, I'm riding this high. And what I see with most basketball players is their nervous system's too sympathetic. It's too high. They're, they're redlining their bodies too much. They don't know how to bring their body down so that it can, that can withstand more stress. They're always running it at, at the top end. So real pros understand how to practice quality instead of practicing all day long. They understand the Goldilocks principle, dosage. Not too little, because that doesn't help you, but not too much. It's gotta be just right. And you gotta figure out how Goldilocks works, because it's super important. They're consistent, okay? They pick one variable at a time, they test it, and then if it works, they stay with it. If they don't, they make adjustments. We'll talk more about that in the last piece is they own them. They're not listening to 79 other people. Yeah, they have advisors and whatnot, but the problem is some of the guys at the highest levels, they have too many people in their ears 
too much bad information. So you got to really trust in the people that uh, give you advice. Self-improvement formula. You have to know. You own you. So you got to know how to improve yourself. Okay, number one is there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, some people like to train what they're good at and get better at that. And then some people like to figure out what they're not good at and train that. Of those two things, and I and I, you know, I could be easily convinced of either or, and I, you know, we could discuss this, but from my money, the people that make the, the best gains are the ones that figure out what they're terrible at and then they go and fix that. And here's what here's what I'm gonna tell you. Four years ago, Steph Curry made a drastic change in his basketball game. What did he do? What was his number one weakness? And what did he do to fix it? Anybody know? His ankles, right? So he wasn't available. He played 44 games four years ago. So as a result, for the 44 games, he got a $44 million contract for four years, $11 million. Now the best guys in the business are making a over over double that. Uh, so, th so they got Steph on the cheap. And what he did to fix his ankles, that's a another interesting thing. And if you guys want to know about it, I can give you an article about it. But long story short is he got his hips stronger. He had surgery on his ankles. They have a formula that works now. They, you know, and I know the, the, the strength coach at, at Santa Cruz, they were trying to figure out what the what the missing link, the, the weak link was in his uh, in his uh, in his program. So they fixed that. So here's an here's a great example of your greatest ability is your availability. He made himself available. So now all of a sudden we can talk about some other things. Then what happened is they came up with a strategy, and the strategy was, okay, I'm going to have ankle surgery, I'm going to brace my ankles, I'm going to get my hips strong, my, my core strong. That guy, Coach Nick, great to see you. I made a Nick, I made a, uh, made a, like number, hey, uh, great to have you in the house, period. It's a game I would have been on time. Yeah. <laughs> so they came up with a strategy, they executed the strategy. He's played uh, 81, 81, 80, and I think 81 again. So long story short is the strategy is, is working, right? He, he did miss some games in the playoffs last year, but long story short is way better than 44 games. He executed the strategy. That's the third piece. And then what happened was is they measured. Hey, is this working? If it is, they make it part of your habit. And then they, work, they go on to the next weakness. And so, you know, he's just gotten better in so many, so many different ways uh, from ball handling to defense to improving his body and being stronger, being able to finish at the cup. The guy's unbelievable. He's constantly reevaluating himself and figuring out what he can do to be better. And he's also really good at, at picking up things really quickly. So they solve stuff really fast for him. So he can just go on to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. So that's how he gets better so fast. But you got to know the self-improvement formula because you, you're, you're ultimately going to own you. This is the performance pyramid. This is something I came up with because I sat down with Coach Carl about a year ago, and I found that I couldn't explain to him what I do. I'm like, ah, you know, I do this and I do that, and I uh, can't, couldn't explain it to him. Uh, so I said, okay, cool, I'm going to put it down on paper. And I'm going to be able to show guys that this is what we do to make you better. Okay, so take my take me as an example. Got sick, unhealthy, unavailable, can't play. What happens is, is most guys they are up here and they practice skills and they they do the skills all day long. But if you're not healthy down here, or let's say you're healthy, but your performance is 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 uh, needs needs help. You're not strong enough. 
You're out there playing against your, you know, against air, and you're amazing. You get in the game, and it's a ghost. You don't see yourself in the game because you can't express your skills against other humans because you're too slow, too, uh, too weak. And you have great skills. Cause I see kids, you know, like the little, on the smaller side, a little skinnier side, or they don't, they don't have um, certain physical traits to be able to express their skills. And you can see that. So this is how you build the athlete. You build the athlete from the ground up. And if you have, this as your foundation, we're going to talk about this. Then we're going to talk about performance. Then we're going to talk about skill because if you put the roof of the house on first, Coach Nick will tell you that ain't gonna work. He builds houses, he'll tell you that's not gonna work, okay? So just real quick at the bottom, we're gonna go through some of these independently and I'm happy to share this with you guys, but at, on the bottom, there's breathing is the first thing, okay? Breathing is incredibly important. It's so important and it's never coached at most levels. Breathing is the number one thing you do when you come into this world. It's the last thing you do when you leave. And if you don't know how to manage your breath for health and performance, you're really missing the boat because what's happening is for every step that you take, your car is running at a high RPM. You're, at a, you're a red line in that sucker. So you have to know when you come off the court, what's your breathing strategy? When you're on the court, what's your breathing strategy? When, when you're at, at, on the free throw line and guys are taking a free throw, what's your breathing strategy? Beyond, before you even get to that, you have to understand that, that there's a certain type of breathing that is healthier for basketball players, for most humans, but especially for basketball players to manage their nervous system. So that's all I'll say on that for right now. Nutrition, incredibly, incredibly important. If you don't have your lifestyle together, uh, don't expect the car to run and run the Ferrari hard if you're not putting good fuel in that sucker. So we're gonna talk about hydration, we're gonna talk about other nutrition stuff, and we're gonna talk about eliminating the, the, uh, the junk food. Um, on this piece of it, Derek Rose, I mean, unbelievable. Like coming out of Kentucky, ridiculously explosive player with finishing skills and shooting ability and can guard broke down. Why? So comes out after the fact. So we're going to talk about injuries, but um, comes out after the fact that he had a big time sugar habit and sugar weakens your tissues, the white stuff, the connective tissue, the muscles. So he's super explosive and God gave him all this ability, but he can't harness it because he's putting bad fuel in his system. And uh, I can't show you a cause and effect, but I can tell you that it didn't help him to eat the sugar that, at, at the quantities that he was eating it at. Okay, sugar is poison for athletes. Uh, if I could get guys to eliminate it, I would, but we'll, we'll talk about a reasonableness rule. So here's hydration. How much should you drink? Uh, what are guidelines for hydration? Anybody have any ideas? Eight cups a day. Eight cups a day. Cool. Okay. Look at me, right? I'm 200. Look at her. She's uh, 250. <laughs> How can we be drinking the same amount of water? That's most absurd thing that I've ever heard. And, and you know, that's what's being promulgated to, 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 to us is, so there's a lot of factors involved. How hot is it outside? How hard did I train? How big am I? Where do I live in this world? So go ahead. Um, we had a game last week. Yeah. Like a hundred degrees. Yep. Yeah. And I had drunk like, I swear, I drank like 13 water bottles and I still was dehydrated. And I ended up throwing up and had the water bottle. Yeah, well, it's it's all it's also because because um, you guys were up in uh, in the Central Valley, right? Yeah, Pleasanton. Pleasanton, right? So so what happens is you take city people like me who live out by the by the water and it's like sixty degrees all the time, and you try to take them to the East Bay and run them hard. That don't, that don't work either. You got to train where you're going to play, right? But yes, that's that's a great point. So 
let's let's talk about this. So one of the things you can always check in with yourself is when I pee, am I here or am I over here? That's one way to know. Okay. The other way to know, this is reactive though. This is after the fact. And one thing we're gonna talk about is great athletes, they're proactive. So what do great athletes do? They have systems that work for hydration. So here's the system. Who, who struggles with hydration? You struggle with hydration? No, I don't drink, I swear I don't drink water when you have practice. Oh, okay, cool. Four bottles of water that day. Okay, great. You're, you're gonna be my guy then, okay? Okay, here's the system. Here's a water bottle. You're gonna need six peas a day, right? I pee once. I roll it up. I pee twice. I roll it up all the way to six. Okay, so that's one way to know. Then on the top, I drink one of these. I roll it down. At the end, all of the rubber bands should be in the middle at the end of your day. Okay, there's your system. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so that's hydration. Uh, a rough guideline is half your body weight in ounces. Rough, don't, don't, because I got, I got, I got better, better numbers for you guys. I'm going to give you something, but a rough guideline for normal humans, not basketball players, but half your body weight in ounces without exercise, without taking into account sweating. A rough guideline. And again, it doesn't work for everybody, so that's why I, I hate those like eight cup rules, half, half your body weight in ounces. Okay, this is my friend, Steve Harvey. You guys ever met him? Uh, family Feud. The most difficult aspect of being an athlete is 550 athletes surveyed. What's the number one answer? Anybody? No. No? Nope. Getting enough sleep. Nope. Getting injured. Boom. Dealing with injury. Number one answer, 42%. It's hard. It's hard mentally. It's hard physically. And uh, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about injury and pain because it's super important and it's on the minds of a lot of people in this room. When you don't sleep eight hours a night, you increase your likelihood of injury by 1.7 times. So that's big. That's a big factor. So put that out there for you. When you get hurt, this is what happens to your body. Your red tissue looks like this. You get hurt, it gets torn up. And then what happens is if you don't rehab it right, you limit the car's ability to get to as good a place as it can be. So what happens is it heals like this and it doesn't return to this. But if you rehab it right, it comes back like this and it can actually even be better and stronger than before. And that is the goal. And every one of you guys, if it's one thing that you learned today, understand that that pain and injury it's just it's just information if you don't if you if you uh, if you do something about it but it's bad information if you don't if you don't listen to your body so let's talk about injury and pain what's the number one Chris don't answer the question what's the number one predictor of injury swelling, swelling. okay let's try again let's get let's get a different one what? No, don't answer the question. What's the number one predictor? I'm a GM, okay? I'm thinking, am I gonna sign Steph Curry? Man, that guy's broke down, okay? Am I gonna sign him? 44 games? Come on, what? I don't need a guy for 44 games. What's the number one predictor? Whether well, you've been injured in the past. Right. The number one predictor of future injury is prior injury. Once you get hurt once, you're more likely to get hurt again, unless you identify that as your weakness and come up with a strategy to remedy it. <clears throat> pain is your body's way of telling you something. That's your body's way of talking to you. 
okay? I once tried to explain to a CrossFit girl, I was doing a presentation, that pain is important and you should listen to it. And she says, well, I only have pain when I do this. I go, well, maybe you shouldn't do that until you figure out why your body's giving you pain in that position. She said, well, I really like doing that. I said, okay, cool. I said, you have a, you have a boyfriend? She goes, yeah. I said, look, let's say my wife says to me, we got a problem in our marriage, right? And then I leave the house. I can't hear her. Problem's gone, right? No, the problem is still there. So you gotta listen to pain, you gotta ask yourself, what's it doing, okay? The next thing is inflammation. So Isaac mentioned swelling, inflammation. Yes, sir. Um, I sprained my ankle like the beginning of the preseason. Like some, some dude said on my ankle. I was uh, playing with an ankle brace the rest of the season, and I took it off when we did workouts at uh, Skyline. Okay, cool. You know what? Let me let me pause and take you back to this right here. Okay, you identified that you, you had an injury, right? You had a strategy, right? You executed the strategy, right? Yeah. Didn't work, right? No. Okay, did you reevaluate? Did you measure it and say, okay, it didn't work? Did you try a different strategy? No. Okay, cool. So now you understand, as an athlete, that's your job. You gotta go back to this every time. You own you. If it don't work, Coach Carl, this isn't working. Who should I talk to? Okay, if you, because if you don't tell anybody, because I can't read your mind, but if you tell me, if you tell Coach Carl, you tell somebody, there's a chance somebody might be able to help you out there. But you gotta ask for help. Is there's, there's an old saying, a hand out, a hand up is not a hand out. So let's get back to this pain, inflammation. Inflammation in this country is some sort of a taboo, it's a bad word. Inflammation is not a problem. We have been programmed or evolved to have inflammation when we have injuries. Do you know why? Because that's our healing process. So when you take anti-inflammatories and ice, you are pushing the inflammation out. If you believe in God, I don't believe God made a mistake in the swelling process. He put that swelling in there for a reason. If you don't, if you believe in evolution, evolution has, has made it so that humans have been able to walk this earth for a long time. So the point is, we've all had this issue, inflammation. It's not a mistake. It happens for a reason. If you take anti-inflammatories and if you, if you use ice, to push the inflammation out, then what's happening is you are interrupting the natural healing cycle. Now, NBA Finals, I gotta play the next game, I'm gonna get in the tub, and I'm gonna use the ice all day long. I'm gonna take the anti-inflammatories, because my teammates are counting on me, and it's a business, and I gotta get out there, totally get that. <laughs> But when it's practice, we owe it to ourselves, you guys owe it to yourselves as athletes, and we as coaches owe it to ourselves to explain to, your, to, to, the, to the athlete, hey, uh, inflammation is natural. Now, what's not, what's not natural is too much inflammation and stagnant in inflammation. <laughs> inflammation that just stays there is a problem too. So remember Goldilocks, you can't have too much, you can't have too little. So this idea of ice and rice, does anybody know what rice stands for? Rice, ice, ice. depression. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, cool. Um, you're, you're, you're fantastic, Coach B. So here's, here's the deal. At the 49ers, or at the Warriors, when those guys get hurt, they do not send them home and say, guys, grab a six pack of beer, lay on the couch and rest. So rest, out, ridiculous, bad, bad advice. Now, ice, we talked about it. If you're in the NBA Finals and you gotta play, 
Let's get that ice going. Let's use the anti-inflammatories. Compression. Forgot to get this. One of these, one of these bands, one of these bands, what you do is wrap your joint that has swelling in it, 50% tension, two minutes, elevate it above your heart, take it off. This is a, uh, I think it's a $10 tool, money. And why is it important? Because compression is like lazy man's movement. And I'm gonna get to the real number one anti-inflammatory in one second, the best thing that you should do. Um, because I'm, I skipped down to the bottom. And compression is valuable because it, what it does is it in, in the instance that you can't move, like, hey, I'm, I'm, my leg's too sore, I can use compression to, to mimic lazy man's movement, so to speak. Follow? But the number one overriding healing mechanism that we have as humans is appropriate movement. Pain-free circular motion surrounding the injured area. I hurt my ankle. I am going to start moving that in a pain-free circular way as quickly as I can. And I mean like right now. Chauncey, uh, he's not here tonight, but he, was, he hurt his hamstring the other day. You know, I told him, hey, just start flexing and extending the leg. Flexing and extending the leg in a pain-free way. Because even if he couldn't play anymore that night, it still would have started the healing process because it would have started taking the old, the old um, blood out and bringing new blood in and the, the healing process is underway. So that's, that's uh, injury and pain, it's super important. Okay, let's talk about movement. So we're still, at the, we're still on the, the foundation of health. Movement, your ability to actually uh, control your joints with proper ranges of motion, having balance, uh, posture and things like that. Are you efficient? You know, can you get into the positions that basketball requires? And it's tough to watch somebody play basketball. They can't get into the positions mechanically and they have to force their joints into something. That's really, really challenging. Um, you, can, you guys can talk to Tutu. You can talk to Isaac, some of the guys that have worked with me where we, we identify what their weak links are in the movement game and start getting them to move better. And then they're not practicing basketball, but yet they get better at basketball. That's, that, that's, that's fantastic. This is what I see common faults in basketball players. They don't have core and hips. Poor hips, poor core, their feet and ankles, brutal. And they cannot stand on one leg. So if you guys want to see a quick test, Here's what we'll do, because I know uh, Zeke approached me, uh, and I should have told you this ahead of time. But come on up here, take your shoes off, and we're gonna do, run a quick test on him. He's dealing with some tendonitis issue, okay? We're just gonna run a quick test on him, because basketball is played on one leg, okay? So don't tell me which leg it is, because I, I don't know. Um, so here's what I want you to do. I just want you to, to, to stand here like this on your left leg for me. Yeah, put your, put, make sure your, uh, your left toes are pointing straight, straight towards the wall, okay? okay so get up just nice and tall and just stand there for me, look straight ahead. Cool, can you close your eyes for me? Okay, that was five seconds with the eyes closed, cool? Okay, let's see the right leg now. Okay, make the right leg, right leg straight. You look straight ahead. Just, just stand there, don't, don't close your eyes, just stand. Can you close your eyes for me? Okay, did anybody see that when he had his eyes open, it was still harder on the right leg? Is the right leg the problem? Okay, cool, have a seat for me. So, it's that obvious. This guy, is he's got two wheels, right? On this side of the car, the tires are pumped up. On this side, they're not. But then he's still driving. I saw him play on Monday night. He's still driving the car hard. I wouldn't drive that car hard right now because all you're doing is, is, is creating that asymmetry 
and that's a problem. Basketball is played on one leg. You're either on one leg or both legs are up in the air. There's no two leg to this. So if you can't do it on your right leg, it probably is going to be a problem for you. The other thing about basketball that's really, really important that you guys have to know is human bodies. They have, there's three planes of motion, straight ahead, side to side, and rotation. Basketball is predominantly played in the rotational plane. My buddy Naveen, who runs the Wizards performance, GPS is all his guys. Any idea how much of the game they play just running straight ahead? What's, per, what's the percentage that they, that they run straight ahead? Anybody know this? 85% going straight ahead? Cool. Five. How much? Five. 20. 20% 20. 20 of the game is running straight ahead. 20. The rest of the game is this, it's that, it's sideways, but it, it ain't straight. So if you are training straight and if you're running sprints for basketball, ah, mm, probably not the right type of conditioning. If you're doing a bunch of forward lunging instead of doing some other type of lunging, some other different strength activities, you're missing the boat because that's not how the game is played. You got to break down the movements in the game in order to actually build the athlete to do what you want them to do. So anyhow, I can talk about that. I love movement. Movement is money. But if you got breathing and you have your sleep and hydration and nutrition and you're pain free and you move well, man, I can do some stuff with you. I can build this because then when I give this guy over to Coach Carl, Coach Nick, Coach B, they are going to work the skills, no problem. Is the, the player has the ability to actually express the skill. So let's talk about performance, okay? Pros, warm up and cool down. That's what pros do. Amateurs, ah, they just show up and they play. Then they leave afterwards. No, no, no idea how to get their body and their mind prepared, bless you. I'm not talking about fancy stuff. I'm not talking about fancy jump training and all this other stuff. And believe me, I love all of it. And we can talk about, you know, French contrast training and all the fancy, but most of the guys, they can't do this. What are we talking about? Like trying to squat 500 pounds and the guy can't stand on one leg and the game's played on one leg. You have to be able to decelerate. If you cannot control eccentric forces, in basketball, you, not only will you not stay healthy, but also you can't decelerate and cut, and you, you, you won't be able to express your, your, the skill that you have. And then last piece is pros manage loads. They understand how to push, and they understand how to rest and recover, and they are awesome at the Goldilocks rule. That's what the pros do. They know how to do that. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm not going to talk about it but I want you guys to see that. I meditate, pros meditate. Steph Curry may not meditate, I don't know what he does, but I know he has a um, float tank, he's big into float tanks, that's a form of meditation. It's a form of bringing your nervous system down. He owns that. Incredibly powerful tool happy to talk to you guys about it. Um, and it's also not by chance that Michael, Kobe, and LeBron meditate. It's not by chance, because that's what elite guys do. And Steph, too. So I'm almost wrapping up here. Um, here's the general observation. So I'm talking to Naveen, and we're going through some of his guys, and he's telling me, like, oh, well, you know, John Wall. And then my other buddy trains John in the summer, uh, Chad Waterbury. And he's, John can roll out of bed, not play for 30 days, and triple double you. Right there. Just, just great parents. He has great parents. His parents, the, the genetics allow him to do that. Now, John Wall is not that interesting to me because I'm more interested in Marquise Morris. I'm interested in Ramon Sessions. Yeah, KU, exactly. Jayhawk. Um, 
So let's talk about those guys in a second. So here's what else pros do. They show up. They show up on time. And what on time means is five minutes early to everything. That's what pros do. Okay? Real, true, elite guys. They bring the right attitude with the right effort every time. Every time. They give you their best effort. Their body language is fantastic. They always train smart first before they train hard. They don't just go out and train recklessly. Oh yeah, today I'm gonna work out for four hours. No, that's, that's, not, that's not gonna help anybody. They're consistent. Pros, the ones that stay for a long time are consistent. Ramon Sessions, Naveen was telling me, he's, on, he's just finished his 10th year. There was a time when he was at year five and six, where he, where he was kind of a marginal NBA guy. And he sat at the end of the bench, and you know, he could have gotten cut. But he shows up, he works hard, and he does the right thing 80% of the time. Now, we're all humans, we're not expected to be perfect, but the, the elite guys, elite guys, they do the right thing 80% of the time, and yeah, they party a little bit 20% of the time, okay? But they know how to manage that. And a guy like Markeith Morris. So Markeith has got, after next year, his contract is up. So Markeith came to Naveen, he said, what do I gotta do? Because that next contract is, is $20 million for me. What do I gotta do? Well, Naveen told him, give me 30 minutes extra every day. Just give me 30 minutes. Show up early 15, stay late 15. Give me 30 and think about how much the compounding effect of that 30 minutes is gonna be. Over the course of you know, 300 days, that's 150 hours extra that he put in of solid work, because I know Naveen and he does amazing work, and so I know that Mark Keefe and Ramon and all those guys and Wall, they're all doing amazing, uh, amazing work, so they're getting better. Um, by the way, uh, I saw a great video today of John Wall playing one-on-one -on -one with a high school kid. So we're gonna talk about humble and quiet confidence. This, this high school kid didn't have that. And uh, it was just John Wall, I mean, I, I don't know why you would bark up at John Wall, but he was barking at him and, and uh, he, they finished a, he finished his one-on-one -on -one game with, the most amazing thing about John Wall is his ability to dunk left-handed when he's right-handed. That, that is, his left-handed finish on the run is ridiculous and he did that to this kid just to, just to shut him up. And the kid, it was great. It was, it, was, it was fantastic for an old guy to see. But true pros um, are, are, are humble and they have a quiet confidence about them. They know, they don't have to bark. They just show up and do their work. They constantly evaluate and reevaluate their systems and their strategies. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this guy. I can never forget, I can never remember his name. Excuse me, Leo. Yes. Say that statement again. I don't know if Mikhail and Monte. Monte. He's right there. What's the humble part? Say it again. <laughs> it's it's important. It, it because because here's the part about well here's the part about the the, the humility piece that's really important is because there's this thing called the likability factor. And I talked to Tutu about this. Everybody's got a likability factor. People either like you or you don't. And if people don't like you, they're not willing to go the extra mile for you. And I'll tell you what, when Tutu was hurt, and, and, I, had a, and I had a wife and kids at home in a business, I got my butt here every day, and I spent the time to get it right because I wanted to see him get healthy because I didn't want him to go to school and have, have his knee hurt again. So he's got that likability factor, and you guys can control that by being humble and quiet and having that, uh, that, that, that uh, humble, uh, quiet confidence about yourself. Um, this is what the other, th uh, so this guy right here, uh, Edin Zeko is his name. He's the number one goal scorer in UEFA. So my buddy uh, Darcy works with him. Last year, had a bad year. Goals weren't going in. And uh, so this guy, you know, played the entire year out. He reevaluated every one of his systems in the off season. Guess how many systems he changed? He, oh, by the way, I should preface this because he was the number two goal, goal, goal scorer two years ago. 
not even in the top guys two uh, last or so three years ago he was number two two years ago didn't score many goals and then this year he became the number one goal scorer in, in, in Europe again so th this is like elite level competition best soccer players in the world how many systems does he change when he goes falls out of the top scorers to become number one how many systems do you think he changed He changed none, not one. He reevaluated every system. He said, hey, I'm doing this. I've already played eight years. I'm doing all these things. I know these systems work. He went back and watched all the film. Darcy said that he just had some bad luck, man. It's like he shoots the ball and, and here's the post and the ball wouldn't, wouldn't go in. So he reevaluates every single one of his systems, says, hey, I'm gonna stay the course. I know what I'm doing is right because it's, it's worked for eight years. Number one goal scorer in in uh, in UEFA. So, so you said so you thought all. So is that what most people, most athletes do? They they reevaluate. They, they have to the, change everything. The real pros. They 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 constantly evaluate and reevaluate. So they're always asking themselves, Can I do this better? Is this system working for me? And so they they use coaches, and they you know he had he had the, the, the soccer trainers, and then he looked at his performance staff. They looked at all his physical therapy stuff, and they said, hey, look, we're not gonna change a thing. And clearly, it wasn't the systems, I'm gonna trust in my team, uh, in the people that are support me, and my teammates, and boom, then he has the results that he's looking for, yeah. Likewise, though, if, um, my guess is, if Darcy and his team had sat down yeah. with this athlete and said, this is what is different about this mm -hmm. year, they would have made changes. This is, right. it's an anomaly that, that they didn't find anything, and they just said, yeah, it was, just, it was just a raw deal this year. But I would say, I don't know what the percentage is, nine times out of 10, five times out of 10, they probably, when they are evaluating and reevaluating, they find something and then they can work on that. So not to say that elite level athletes reevaluate and never find anything, because I think more often than not, there is something that's gone wrong, whether it's an injury thing like Leo's been talking about or a nutrition thing, or so they had a new baby and they're not sleeping as much, whatever that thing is, they would probably reevaluate. This guy happened to have, you know, everything was just, yeah, okay. You have to run it through a reasonable lens. You've got to run it through that system. Identify what's not working. The, what wasn't working, his weakness was the result, not what he was doing. He just, the ball wasn't going in the basket sometimes. You know that. Right. Just doesn't go in sometimes. But, but the process <laughs> that he was using, it had already been proven to work uh, eight years. So he, go ahead. Like we're talking about pro athletes who's already been there. They, like you said, he already Right, has. exactly, exactly. And now we're talking about, say, young guys like, like yep. I Mikhail, his thing, he's developing still. Yep. So now, in that, I, mean, I told him, it's like his thing is patience. It's going to come. You got to have that patience when you're first starting off. You know, so so when you go early on, start reevaluating sometimes. That, is that too early sometimes? You know, I'm not having to assess because we gotta I, make those, I gotta, haven't been doing it long enough. Yeah, we got to, you know, you have to do it for a reasonable period of time and then measure it. Right. You have to come up with a measure, like a performance indicator. Like, you know, let's say, let's say Mikhail, um, he's trying to improve his three point shot from the, uh, from the top of the, from the top of the arc, right? Straight onto the basket. So what you do is you have him work on that shot and then you measure it. Okay, Mikhail, I'm gonna give you, a, I'm gonna give you a hundred tries, right? So we're gonna give you 100 tries, we get our number. So the, let's say the number for the, for the 100 tries is he hits 20 of them, okay? Okay, so then, so then what happens is you guys come up with a strategy and Mikhail goes for six weeks and he executes that strategy. Let's say he's gotta shoot uh, for 10 minutes three times a day from that same spot, right? Then what happens is you come back and remeasure, and if, the number went from 20 to 25 or 30 to 35 keep doing that strategy but if if the number stayed the same then maybe your strategy is not not right so um so that that's the thing is but 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 the key is to understand is pros real elite guys they have awareness about them they they're constantly looking for the better way they're willing to change but they don't they're not going to change for the sake of change they're going to change because it's better um, for, for them, and they, and they get that. We talked about this, they, pros anticipate, they don't react. They figure out like, hey, I, I, I'm feeling like this is a little bit off, 
So I'm going to work on that to, to, be a, to stay ahead. They are always prepared for the worst case scenario. So the real elite guys, they think, they think through like, hey, if this happens to me, I'm gonna do this. So nothing's a surprise. And that was, um, uh, I'll talk a little bit more just down, down here, but the, the, the last thing that, that the real elite guys do is they take responsibility for them. They, hey, you know, even if it's not their fault, they just say, they own it and then they work on it and they work it through and they take the pressure off the, the, the other players in their, in their system. It's, it's an incredible thing, but those, those elite leaders, elite guys, that's what they do. They also have a people strategy, and this is important because how you treat others, and this gets back to the likability factor, like Damian Lillard, man, that guy, his likability factor is so high, incredibly high. People just like him, why? Because he's always doing the right thing. So they, they lost in the playoffs. He took the playoff money that the entire team, he got his teammates together. He said, guys, we're gonna take all our money, whatever it was, like $30,000 per, per teammate. These, the, the training staff, the physical therapists, the doctors, they all supported us all year. We're gonna pool our money, we're gonna divvy it up, we're gonna give it to them. Now, he's making a lot more money than some of the other guys, but he was able to convince those other guys to put their share in. Those kinds of things go so far with as far as you know people working for those guys like you know I, I bet you their their training staff will work around the clock for a little because he's just he's that good a guy um, and then the last piece I wanted to tell you is the guys that are successful the real the real true success guys their social circles are clean they have great relationships because in pro sports what happens is there are more bad times than good. The good times, they come, but the bad times, it's more of a struggle, it's a job, you're really working at it. So if, you know, during the good times, having some bad people around you, not a big deal. But in the bad times, when you really need somebody, he, he said that uh, some of the guys really, really struggled on their team because they had the wrong people around them and it really hurt their performance when when they, were, when they were in the dumps and they didn't have the right support system. So that's incredibly, incredibly important. Um, I think that uh, all that stuff, I mean, these, these, are, these are lessons that, you know, yeah, some of them are, are from me, but most of these, these lessons come from the pro teams. So here's the thing, this is your choice. You keep doing the same thing and expect different results, which is the definition of, um, of insanity, or you can pick one thing, you strategize, you execute, you reevaluate, and you repeat. And so I'll leave you with this one thing. So real quick, these things that I'm passing out, it's a great way for you guys to execute simple strategies just to get yourself healthier. Little extra sleep, little extra exercise intensity. Um, so if you look at the bottom and, and then the hydration piece, uh, the, the yellow is the goals. For exercise intensity, the reason why it's four is because that's where your average should be. Because you guys are playing playing basketball hard. Yeah, there are going to be some days where you're going to push harder in the gym and you're going to get a five, but then there's going to be other days where you go three and you average to four. And you have to know how to do that. You can't just redline the car all the time. Okay, so that's for you guys. Happy to answer any questions. That's it. Questions? Thank you guys for coming. No, I, I don't have a question, but I, I, I just want to know uh, these guys, how valuable this has been to be here. Because especially the basketball players, we all come. We all, like, when I was coming up, like, it'll tell you, too, you said the same thing. We didn't have crazy stuff like this, you know, things like this. Because, you know, it's just like I know my young guys. So they just think when you're working out or when I'm, I want to be a better player, I get to the gym. I get to the gym. I get to the gym, I'm okay. But I want you guys to know the young guys and everybody. It's more than just the gym. Here. That's that's what this was about. You know, we, we leave it out of, of the most important part, or that middle part. You know, and that's why I'm just hoping that a lot of guys will get here and get this because it, you know we just think that you know just because I'm in the gym that's enough. You know, just because I'm shooting a lot of jump shots that's that's enough. You know. It's not, you know, I hope, I hope that's, what, that's what I got out of here today, maybe too. Like Leo said, when he first 
for the period of me and show me, you know, this is what I do. And I start to understand it more and more. We did that for like three times before we really start to get to the point where, okay, okay, now I'm on, I'm on point. You know, walk around. And ever since then, I haven't let him go. You know, I, I haven't let go because I know he had an important piece for me, but I can get my players. You know, I've learned just, just since the year we've known each other, learned so much. You know, I, I, I stopped killing my players because, you know, everything was just up oh, pretty nice. <laughs> Ice was the answer. And I just learned, and like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what he's saying. When he got the ankle injury, I called him. He, he knows. Go back to your text message. You have all those text messages. So he has, you know, you have the things that, you know, is, is there. He has, and those guys, listen, like you said, they started taking off the ankle braces. So I'm, I'm thankful, Liam. Um, thank you for, thank you for saying that. And, and, and that's one of the things I, I, I failed to mention is Darcy told me is that elite guys, there's two and 22. There's two hours that they spend with me in the facility, and then there's 22 hours they spend on their own. The elite guys manage the 22 perfectly. Not just in conscious of the facility. So it's the two and twenty-two rule. And you know, Coach Carl said it when I was a kid. My, I had a friend who uh, was a basketball player, and um, he was going to see Don Chu and Hayward. And my, my parents said to me, oh, and 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 this kid improved his vertical leap in a summer eight inches. So he started like just doing going from like two hand dunking to like doing like crazy three sixty. And he was also a triple jumper and wound up going to the state meet and triple jump. Anyways, a good friend of mine. And I said to my mom and dad, I said, hey, you know, I want to go to Don Chu because I, I, I want to be an athlete too like that. You know, and I could see Ted's getting better. And, and my mom and dad said, hey, we, that's not in the budget. And so for me, part of it is, is I would listen to anybody. I would listen to anybody just to try to be better. Any, I mean, man, I, I can't even tell you some of the – that I've done, just really bad stuff that didn't help anybody, and uh, and so I'm always help, you know happy to to give you guys like the real the real that I know today that I'm holding on to uh, because that'll help you to to not make the same same mistakes that, that I made. Yes, sir. Yeah, the um, you know great stuff. Uh, Great stuff overall. We tell our guys, you know, four things. You got to focus. You got to get shots. You got to work on your skills. You got to play games, and then you got to work on strength and conditioning. You add that. Plus, they got school and they got other stuff. So, you know, there's only so many hours in a yep. day. And again, I know a lot of the stuff is lifestyle, yep. which is constant. Yep. But in terms of the strength and conditioning piece, what do you think is an appropriate amount of hours or days? Per week to achieve a base level of what you're talking about, is it three days a week for an hour and a half, or, or just just give us some sense about how much time guys need to commit to the to this piece of it that you're primarily talking about? Um, I'm gonna answer that question. You're not gonna like my answer, but you're gonna uh, I'm gonna answer it. But the other thing too, I was gonna uh, circle back with you on the ankle braces. So what happens is when you brace a an, a joint that joint tends to get weak. And so what happens is if you don't do anything to bring that joint back and then take the brace off, because the brace is basically doing what the tissue is supposed to do. But if the tissue is weak and it can't do it, and you take the brace off, that may not be like, for example, like with Steph Curry, they don't ever take the brace off in the game. Uh, they may work on his ankles a little bit, but they don't ever because they've just figured out like the strategy. You know, you you might need to you might need to wear the the brace, or you might need to do some rehab to get it ready to be to play brace free. So you got to make sure that the strategy is right on that front before the young man starts playing without a brace. Because because remember, once you hurt it, it's a lot more likely you hurt hurt it again unless you do something to to change the strategy. So remember that. And the, to, Randy, the answer to your question is it depends. It depends. Isaac sitting over there spent two months building the foundation, and he, he you can talk to him about it. We we do, we've just been working on mobility, his breathing, getting all that stuff set. He just met with Robbie today. We're just gonna put in a. Uh, nutrition program which is going to enable us to start doing some of the performance training 
So the reason why it depends is because each one of your guys is gonna have different needs. Some guy's gonna be like way ahead of where, where Isaac started. Some guys will be worse. So you gotta meet them where they are and you can't cookie cutter an approach. And this is, this is the other thing at the, at, the, at the Wizards, John Wall's getting his, Ramon Sessions getting his and they're different. And Marquise Morris is getting his and Bradley Beal's getting his. Everything is, and that, that's, that's what we do here is we figure out what you can't do and then we do we help you do that because we somebody's got to identify the weakness zeke didn't know his right leg was blown out he said he just knew his right knee is painful he, he he doesn't know he doesn't know how to test for that kids don't know they don't know where they're deficient so the answer to your question is it depends for some kids not that much time for a lot for other kids you can ask isaac how, how much and how hard he works to get to, to make his body function for him so that when when coach b says isaac do this he's like okay cool i can do that and that's that's the truth there is no cookie cutter answer for that like maybe a lot of high school coaches and you know we're talking about general uh just like across the board or something. well if, if i mean it's it's what you can allocate to it right i mean if I promise you that if you said, hey, look, I can allocate 30 minutes twice a week or 30 minutes three times a week, and that's all you can do, then you, you can get a lot of good work done in that time. You just get as much as you can. You know, there's always, it's like, it's like basketball. High quality work, more, more high quality work, more times than not is, is, is gonna be better. Uh, but it has to be high quality work and you have to make sure you're not overstressing the kids. So there's this component of, I, I hate to answer it this way, but you know, this is, this, it, it depends. But it's, I think the, the better way to do it is, what, what can you, as a coach, how much can you allocate? How much time of your, of your time with the kids, or how much, can you, how much more can you ask of them? And if it's an hour a week, then you gotta build it, you know, spread it out in an hour a week and you gotta make really, really choice decisions as to how you maximize their time and uh, you know, their, for the time spent. Like exercise selection has to be solid. Um, you gotta make sure you understand each kid's limitations and things like that. So that's how, that's how you might be able to build something within the framework of what you're able to do. Wow, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in the hall before, but being a skyline, I don't have the budget that I'm in the that's how I know the personal trainers and all that. You know, it's just Tim and I. Yep. So you suggest we sit down with each person individually. And I think what I think what you do in that case is you come up with a five, I don't know, three, five, four exercise routine that are uh, that are um, would would address some of the issues that the players have and and implement that. So you learn the Turkish getup, you learn uh, rotational lunging, you learn single leg reaches, some fundamental exercises, you learn how to do a push up, you, do, you learn, learn how to do a, or, or train the pull ups, like five exercises that are really global exercises mm -hmm. that would help, um, you know, I, 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 I sit here and say three to five, no, because because I'm, I know it's a little bit more than that, but anyways, you narrow it down and then you just have them do that. And then you change how you do it. And I can, I can show you a little bit more. And to what I'm hearing also, I should be trying to know more individually with my players. You know, where it's, you see, if you could identify their well, weakness. Yeah, like, does, that, does that carry over to conditioning, which is basically running? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, if, 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 uh, What's well, a question of how you run them? You know, do you are you are you running them straight ahead, right? So so like that's that we could maybe do a little bit better. Look, it's everybody's about everybody's about better. We're all here to learn, right? So like I, I picked this up because I had the opportunity to talk to my my buddy Naveen who has the GPS coordinates on the on the players. Now I didn't know basketball was not a linear game. I mean I, I did, but I didn't know it was twenty percent linear. That's that blew my mind. So, um, so it's a question of, you, you can also condition humans without running them. Because 
Um, like, for example, you know battle ropes? You ever seen battle ropes? That's a great way to condition people, and then you can save their legs a little bit, but you still work on their cardiovascular system. So there's all these kinds of things that you can, you can think about um, that, that, that you make little tweaks, and everything's about just being a little bit more efficient, a little bit more efficient. But if you said to me, hey, this is how much time I have, then I could help you exercise select, conditioning uh, drill select, things like that, that, that can, that can um, have your, your, your guys be better. Yes, sir. Um, you talk about better anti-inflammatory. I know when I'm up at the park and my legs are really sore, I just like jump in the ice bath. So yep. what would be a better solution than just icing on my joints? Um, so one of the things is like some gentle, uh, some like riding a bike gently. That will, because what that does is that cycles uh, the blood out. If you need to use an anti-inflammatory, one thing you might want to consider is using a natural one, which is like a turmeric. Turmeric with hot water and black pepper, it doesn't taste great, but it works. Um, so that's, uh, that's something to consider. And then, and then uh, so you come off the floor, you're done playing. Maybe get on a bike or get in, get into. You guys have pool? Or no access. I tell you, I see you happy night. You have a pool? Yeah, you get in the pool. You have those uh, waistbands, so you you're basically unload it, and then what you do is you just you run in water for 15 minutes as a cool down, and that will help you uh, with the joints being stiff. And see, remember we talked about pros warm up and cool down. High school, college guys, they don't. They just leave the floor and then they're done. And then so what happens is. Because every time you train, as soon as you're done, you're getting ready to train again. So, so I'm, I left the floor and I'm foam rolling. I'm, that's another thing you can do. You can foam roll. Uh, you can get in, in the pool, get on the bike, do some light recovery, uh, flushing your system, s starting in with the nutrition right away, you know, having, having uh, protein having maybe some before you get on the court, immediately after, timing of nutrition. I mean, it gets very, very complicated. I, and I, I, don't, I don't wanna get too far afield, but Draymond Green just uh, in March hired a, a new nutrition um, team and he's got, a, he's got a nutritionist and a cook. So the nutritionist tells the cook what to do and then they, they create the meals with the right amount of nutrients and the right timing, and the, and the right timing. So, I mean, you know, we don't have that option. Like, I, you gotta do it for yourself, so you gotta come up with your own strategies as to how to do that. But those are some, some ways to, to limit the, the inflammation. But also, figuring out, like, yeah, of course your legs are gonna be sore. You're, you're, you're running around on a tire that's half full. It's not gonna work. You gotta get the, because then what happens is that right leg, whatever the issue is in there, if you solve that up, when you solve that up, when you solve that up, then perhaps you won't be as sore. Yes, sir. Can, can I just say, but before, 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 he, before we talk, I, you know, I don't want to, like, I don't, I don't want this to come off the wrong way because I don't say this about everybody. If, if Isaac didn't have this guy in his life named Joshua, who's the yoga instructor, I don't know how he could have played. I, I, I look at his body and I, and I think it's a, it's a minor miracle that he played two years of basketball with that body. And he's, he's, he's good at what, you know, but. Man, I'm telling you, there's like, there's potential in there. And, you know, starting every game with your knee bugging you, I mean, what kind of way is that to play? It, that's just too hard. So you like, you like, you know, it's like starting two strikes in the count. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it was like, ever since like, I don't know, even after the sophomore year, when I hurt my ankle, when I didn't rehab right, that Leo and I found out was terrible later on. Like I would I would have knee pains like in my left knee like whenever I played, you know, like whenever I warm up. You know, there'd be good days where I wouldn't feel it as much. And every time like we're adrenaline would kick in, like I wouldn't feel it. And, like even like with like rain on your AU team, like some days it'd be like, you know, like yeah, I could feel it because you know AU exposure playing for the coaches like, oh yeah, you don't really care about it. But then like after it'd be really sore. 
and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so then Leo, Leo basically conducted a bunch of tests and we devised a bunch of different strategies to strengthen my weaker parts of my legs. And you know, maybe about three weeks in, I, I instantly felt that I had a week of like, a span of like a week and a half where I didn't feel any knee pain at all. And then some of it came back after I took a little bit of a break. But now that Leo and I have been working again, I haven't felt knee pain in uh, maybe three weeks now. And it's like the mo the mobility and flexibility have like always been a problem with me, and we you know found a way to fix a lot of that stuff, and what I think is like a reasonable amount, of, reasonable amount of time. And and he's the perfect example of his nervous system. Guy was like up here, just so his body was just it, it was tight because it was protecting him from himself, from what he was doing to it. So the body just locked down as a protective mechanism. And it's just easier when you can like move. You know, if you can't move, there's no way to play this game. You can't play this game without, without being able to move. So what's some of the movement you're doing now that you weren't doing before? What are the things you're doing now? You're doing? Just from an outsider, like I, I watch a lot of humans move. I watch them move in football, I watch them move in basketball, and I watch humans move all day long in here, all day long. And you, you can ask the folks that I work with, like I just, I just want, ooh, that, you know. Humans are, we're, we are wired uh, to see strength and weakness in movement, right? Like we can gauge other humans because uh, I, I believe this is because when we were hunter, hunters and gatherers, we would be able to figure out where who the weak one in the herd was so we could get that, right? Or we would see who the strong one is so we could survive and stay away from that. So we know the, the ends are real good. And like, you know, I showed up the other day to work with Greg and you were already there, you had a nice sweat on, like, ooh, this guy's a worker, man. So then you gotta ask yourself the Goldilocks, you know, then I see the videos of you on Facebook and you're working with this guy and that guy, it's like, you know, sometimes less is more, and you might be the guy that is violating the Goldilocks principle by too much. So one of the things that for someone like you, yeah, there's a lot, if you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself, that's no way to play, you know, and I, and, and I, I wasn't sure, I, I, I hadn't seen enough of your game, but when I saw you play the other day, like you hit that first three, and then you, you 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 miss the next two two or three, and I felt like I felt like the your body language was different, you know. Um, and I know you've been working on your shot. You told me that, so I'm trying to put the pieces together a little bit. So if you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself, and you you know, there's there's another piece to this whole thing that I didn't talk about. That's on that pyramid, is is the mental imagery. And then for you, maybe your answer is is some sort of you know, mindfulness practice that would help you uh, to 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 calm you know to calm yourself because if you're not sleeping and you're working as hard as you do and believe me I, I was impressed by your your work ethic because I was like whoa then, then something else is amiss right and you if you think you could get better then maybe the the answer is less instead of more um, so I don't I don't know but it's some, something that you got to dig into. Measure, you know, strategize, execute, remeasure, see if see if you're better. You know, put some strategy in play. Um, I, I none of the none of those guys are here, but there's a book that that I can give you that uh, Phil Jackson gave to Michael Jordan about meditation. This guy named George Mumford, and uh, you know, George got Michael meditating and was all all over from there. Emma. Along those lines. Can you talk briefly about the breathing that you mentioned? Yeah, so just 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 very rudimentary. Watch, watch me breathe. Okay, now watch me breathe. When I breathe here, that's my parasympathetic stress nervous system. Okay? Why is that important? Because your body doesn't know the difference between emotional stress psychological stress, physical stress, it's just stress to the body. So we all have this bucket of stress. And then if you 
breathe down here five times, Harvard study, five breaths into the belly, nasal breaths, expand the belly, belly down here, just breathe like your lungs are down here. Five breaths is enough to change your nervous system, to calm you down, five times, okay? Now if you, you know, there's meditation, it can be 20 minutes, it could be, so five breaths is like, you know, let's say it's 30, 30 seconds, right? So, first of all, most humans don't know how they're breathing because all the humans that come through our door, we always check. We're like, how's he, how's, I, I say, hey, if I didn't tell you, I'd say, hey, Emma, show me a nice deep breath. And you would show me, you, you would show me your breath and then I'd go, oh, I know a little bit about Emma now because more than likely, don't, don't take this wrong way, more than likely you're gonna breathe like this. So then I would say, oh, she's got, you know, she's, her body doesn't know how to fluctuate. Now maybe it's me, maybe I'm the one that's giving you the stress and I try to figure that out. But, and I say to the person, hey, are, you know, do you, you feel relaxed right now? They're like, yeah, yeah, I feel, I feel good. Okay, cool. So you're, you choose a stress strategy for a relaxed, for what you perceive as a relaxed state. So that's just the owning your breath from a nervous system health perspective. There's also breathing techniques that, you know, that, that people use, like coaches. If you see the other team and they got their mouth like this, pick them up at the baseline. If you're running and you see a guy that's breathing one time, every, so he's, he's taking a breath every stride, run him. If they're taking one breath every four strides, they got a lot of juice in the tank, so you may not want to run those guys. So you got to know, you got to kind of, you know, I'm, I'm watching the game, I'm seeing like, oh yeah, ooh, man. Thinking, oh, this guy's out of shape, boy. Oh no, that, that guy, oh, I like that. Let's trap, you know, I like, you know, see that, you're thinking about like, what's the strategies? And like, I see guys coming off the floor, and I, and I see nobody's got a conscious breathing strategy for recovery, so you can perform better quicker. Um, those things are, you know, even some of the elite guys don't do it. You know why? Because breathing is, it's not sexy. So it's hard to sell pros on breathing. But the real guys, the real, the true, the true pros, they will, they will do it because it gives them that half of a percent edge or 0.1 percent edge. So they just take on breathing. Anybody else? All right, gents and ladies, thank you so much for coming. Hopefully you guys will be better. Pick one strategy and, and, and improve.